We can use a U-tube manometer like this one to measure differences in pressures. If we have a pressure P1 and a pressure P4 and we'd like to know the difference between them, then by looking at the densities of all the fluids involved, we can figure out that pressure difference based on this difference in height. So let's walk around the tube from P1. P2, the pressure at this location here, will be P1 plus rho 1 times G times H1 minus H2, increasing as we go down here. P3 will be equal to P2 plus the density of whatever this manometer fluid is times G times H2 minus H3. So again, the pressure is increasing as we go down in elevation through the manometer fluid. And it doesn't matter this loop down at the bottom because the pressure increases down and then decreases going back up the same amount. And then finally, P4 will be equal to P3 minus a value for the increase in elevation, so minus rho 4 times G times H4 minus H3. And the height of this rise up here doesn't matter because the pressure decreases as we go up and then increases again as we go down. So if we want to know the difference in pressure between 4 and 1, we get the combination of all three of these. Rho 1G H1 minus H2 plus rho manometer G times delta H minus rho 4G H4 minus H3. And knowing each of these densities, knowing this delta H measure here, and knowing those relative elevations, we can figure out that pressure difference. Note that the HU down here, the height of the bottom of the U, and the HB up here, the height of the top of this bulge, don't matter. Loops around like that and down like this cancel out. There are some special cases we can look at for manometers. For instance, we've got P4 minus P1 for our YouTube manometer depending on all three legs of the manometer from there, through here, and out to there. But if we have air over a liquid, then rho 1 and rho 4 are both equal at about 1.2 kilograms per cubic meter if it's atmospheric air, and much, much less than the manometer fluid. So they'll have a negligible effect. And we'll wind up with P4 minus P1 equal to rho manometer whatever this fluid is, times G times the delta H, the difference in heights. Alternately, if we have water over mercury, so we've got water in here and water in here, then rho 1 is equal to rho 4 is the density of water, and the difference in pressure between 4 and 1 is rho H2O times G times H1 minus H2 minus H4 plus H3 gets us through all the water elements and then an element for rho G, rho HG, G delta H. Let's try that again. For water over mercury, the densities are the same. So we can still write the P4 minus P1 equation following the same way and group the, the water legs together. If we arrange that this way, we can look at H1 minus H4, the difference in height between those two locations, and then H2 minus H3, the difference in height between those two locations for the water. Then we also have rho hg times g delta h. Thus we'll have a difference in pressure due to the fact that 
one and four are at different elevations. And we'll have a difference in pressure due to the fact that mercury and water have very different densities over this delta H. So the difference in densities times delta H gives us the difference in pressures between the two. And if H1 is equal to H4, if the elevations for these two are the same, then P4 minus P1 will just be rho HG minus rho H2O G delta H. So the delta H depends on the difference in densities. We can use this to advantage in a mercury manometer to measure relatively large pressures. Or if we make our manometer fluids very close in density so that this fluid is very close to the density of this fluid, then we can magnify small pressure differences into large delta H ranges. If we had a reservoir like this open to atmosphere with a pipe coming out of it and nothing to block the flow, then water is going to flow down through here, out through the pipe, and out onto the ground out here. There's going to be friction, viscous shear, resisting the motion in the pipe. So the result is there's going to be a pressure drop. The pressure will be quite high here and drop down to atmospheric pressure at the exit. If we put a bunch of tubes on the pipe sticking out the side and going up like this, these are piezometers. And although this fluid is moving, the fluid in each of these tubes in a steady situation will be stationary. The result is we can apply fluid statics from here up to here to find out the pressure. Just delta P equal to rho G delta H. So a high height here indicates a high pressure here. A lower height, a lower pressure, a lower height, a lower pressure, and a lower height, another lower pressure. These are called piezometers and they allow us to directly visualize the pressure gradient as we go down the pipe. We'll talk more later about uh, pressure losses in pipes and just how to characterize the friction in a pipe like this.